Welcome to the second episode of the Heritage Langham podcast. I'm Heather Payton. In case you're new to our project, what we're doing is saving the fabric of our medieval church, St. Jerome's in Langham, Pembrokeshire, with the help of generous funders. And alongside that, we're researching the roots of the Flemish invaders whose descendants built it. In this episode, we'll be listening in on the creators of the talking tapestry of Langham. But first, let's return to the extraordinary results of our DNA analysis project. We were aiming to find a genetic link between Langham's 12th century founders and today's village residents. A bit like finding a needle in the proverbial haystack, you may think. But as you'll know by now, we actually succeeded. The tests showed that one man, former deputy headmaster Norman Roach, had a rare combination of genetic markers that matched that of men named Roach in Ireland. And they're thought to be direct descendants of our founding father, Godbert. The results ceremony was filmed for the TV series DNA Cymru. Well, here's a reminder, starting with producer-director Winford Jones. The one result that was surprising was uh, was Norman Roach's result. Next up is Norman Roach. Now, you belong to a very unusual type. We've been able to um, find data uh, about the Y chromosomes of a number of men um, called Roche, uh, principally of Irish descent. When we look to compare your chromosome to their chromosome, they match. They established themselves here, then they, they went to Ireland, uh, and they have descendants in Ireland. And many of those descendants who are living in Ireland, and I presume in America as well, have um, looked at the genetic markers of their own DNA, uh, and Norman Roche is, is part of that lineage. You've found one of their living descendants. Fantastic. Well, uh, incredible. It makes you feel humble in a way, really, you know. One of the Della Roches actually built Roach Castle, so your ancestral home may be a castle. Yes. Well, uh, it's astounding. Norman Roach digesting a surprise addition to his family. The other extraordinary thing about Norman's result is that his haplotype originated thousands of years ago in southern Egypt which of course raises more questions than it answers. Well, coordinating the research into Roach descendants across the planet is a chap called Peter Roach, the head Roach we might call him, who runs Roach Lineages, the Roach Family DNA Project. He's also a university academic based in Melbourne, Australia. He told me, with occasional help from next door's dog, what he thought of Norman's DNA results. Well, when I when I first uh, heard about his results, I was, I was quite excited because uh, it's the the first result that we've got from Wales. Uh, when it when it uh, comes to the the Roach DNA project, most of the um, most of the members have originated in Ireland or uh, would have ancestors in Ireland. So this is a quite an exciting uh, result to actually have a, a Wales connection with uh, the main Irish family. So what chance do you think we had really of, of finding someone with this genetic link? Well, I, it really depends on, obviously, with the, the surname. So you've, you've got someone uh, living in Langham with uh, the Roach surname and they've traced their family history back 250 years. So, look, I would say that the chances, if you looked at, and it's hard to know without testing a few other Roaches in the local area, but... It could be at least half of the roaches would actually belong to that main main lineage. Do you think that we really have shown a link all the way back to Godbert in the 12th century? I, th- I think so. Well, I, I think the, the nice thing about the DNA project is particularly the results that we've been working with, uh, with the Irish uh, group. And so we've probably got about 25 members, 25 roaches that have been DNA tested that belong to that lineage uh, that have been tested so far. And the nice thing about the DNA results that we're working with is that you can actually, it acts as a molecular clock. So you can actually trace back and do a calculation to work out how long ago the common ancestor was for all of those 25 people. It's very easy to do. So that DNA analysis, when I first did it, of, of that pool of people, if you do the calculation, the common ancestor uh, was born about 900 years ago. Is it reasonable to assume that the roaches 
in Ireland are the descendants of Godbert's sons, Richard and Rodbert, who, of course, went there in the 1100s. Yes, yes, that, that's correct, because uh, if we actually look at the, the actual history of um, the descendants of uh, Richard and Rodbert uh, de la Roche, um, there's a, there's a well-established history of uh, a, quite a wide dynast dynasty um, in Ireland. And I think that's where the, um, I suppose, the Roach dynasty really flourished uh, when they moved into Ireland. And in, I don't want to say this uh, in any way to um, reduce the effect of uh, the Roach history in Wales, but when, when we look at the Roach history, I suppose, uh, once they moved into Ireland, that is where they really prospered. And uh, they had a, a long history going right up to the, uh, the 18th century. They became Viscounts Roach, uh, a very powerful family in Cork and Wexford. And when we look at the, the project, we've got members that have come from both of those areas. So we've got members that have, uh, can trace their ancestry back to Cork and also Wexford. And now the same uh, lineage we've got, uh, the first person tested in Wales is also a member of that lineage. Well, theirs and, of course, Norman's haplotype is very rare. Did that make it easier or harder to do this? It makes it very easy. Actually, it makes it extremely easy. This is one of the, I suppose, accidents, just having that particular haplogroup. But it makes it very easy to trace because with the, the main database that we're looking at, the main database has got about half a million people. This is the database that Family Tree DNA run. So we're looking at probably half a million to 600,000 individuals with Y DNA results. And I've got access to that database. So we know exactly how many uh, members are uh, in that group. And if we look at um, the half million or so, there might only be 500 people, 500 people out of uh, that half million have that haplogroup. group. And so it's very rare. You found these genes in Wales and, and Ireland, and I believe Scotland, uh, where we know there was a, a Flemish community. But what about in Flanders itself? No, well, I think the issue is that not many people test in, in uh, Flanders, Flanders, sorry. And um, I think that's just by the, the nature of uh, who's interested in DNA testing. Most of the people that are interested in DNA testing tend to be in the US or Canada, uh, or Australia. There is, of course, this continuing mystery that the haplotype originated in southern Egypt. So how might it come to be present in Godbert and his sons, and now, of course, Norman? Yeah, well, uh, it probably goes back to the Roman era of uh, Egypt. So if we, if we have a look at around about 2,000 years ago, where um, basically Egypt was a, a Roman uh, province, and so that was actually one of the most important Roman provinces, uh, Egypt. It, it provided most of the grain for the, uh, the empire. And there was actually quite a few um, Roman uh, legions uh, based in, in southern Egypt, where this haplogroup uh, originates. And so probably what's happened is that one of the, the local uh, individuals there has, uh, as part of that, um, maybe that trade, between uh, Egypt and uh, Italy, or maybe uh, also maybe as part of uh, one of the legions, has migrated from southern Egypt to Italy. And uh, thinking of that database that's got half a million individuals in it, we can actually see if there's any related people to the group in other parts of Europe. And the, the closest linkage outside of um, the UK are a few individuals in Italy, in northern Italy. And if we again, if we look at that molecular clock and find out who the, how long ago the common ancestor was, it was around about 1,500 years ago. So that place is a common ancestor around about 1,500 years ago in Italy. And so that's the, that's the entry point uh, into Europe. And that, that's probably, and it could be before that. So... Uh, from, from Italy, again, if you think of the, the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire extended right up to uh, 
uh, Belgium, Flanders region. So you, it's quite easy to see how you can get a migration from Italy. Peter Roach in Melbourne on the extraordinary journey of Norman's DNA. You may also know that the Heritage Langham Project is planning a tapestry along the lines of its famous predecessor in Bayeux, showing our history in pictorial form, lovingly designed and stitched locally. When it's finished, it'll be exhibited in the church. Well, I joined them as the stitching got underway in the village hall, though by now the six frames have been moved to people's homes for a bit of communal embroidery, which may or may not also turn out to be a great excuse for cups of tea or coffee. My name is Jackie Wordsworth and I was asked if I would coordinate the tapestry. So I have been trying to round up stitching volunteers and organising all the materials. So it's been a question of sourcing and purchasing fabric, yarn, um, butcher's string would you believe, needles, thread and all that sort of thing and organising the making of six tapestry frames, one for each of the panels and the designs were ultimately made by a lady called Fran Evans, a local illustrator, and she designed them from all the pictures and um, ideas that came from the school children in Langham School. I'm Fran Evans. The artists in this project are the children. So I took all the drawings of the children and I almost put together put the compositions together like a jigsaw. This one's my favourite. It's when, I'm probably going to get the names wrong. I think it's Godbert arriving in Langham. <laughs> and the children's boats, the drawings of the boats were so fantastic that I had to have one composition where the boat was first you know, in the foreground. I'm the Reverend Andrew Johnson, who um, is now parish priest in Dale Marlowe's St Ishmael's and St Bride's and I was phoned up by the Archdeacon because I happened to have some experience in doing large embroidery, ecclesiastical embroideries and he said um, the group in Nangham are about to do something big unfortunately the person that was directing them is, has had to pull out any chance of you going and giving them a hand and um, it's been downhill ever since <laughs> I have been doing textiles since I was tiny. My first degree is in weaving and spinning and, and lace making. And as part of one of my final pieces for my degree show was to do a um, altar frontal for Tenston Church in Kent. I then uh, taught in adult education and then I went out to the island of St. Helena as handicraft advisor to the island and came back convinced I was going to work for the church, but all the time doing the odd piece of embroidery, the odd piece of weaving. My name is Jane Mills, I'm chairman of the Local History Society and I've got involved in the tapestry because it's been a fascinating project. We've been doing research on the Flemish anyway and it's just really exciting to be involved in some tapestry. This is Hazel Cripps from Black Tar, part of Langham, and I'm doing it because I think it looks interesting and I want to have a go at embroidering, which I haven't done much of. Hope it goes okay. I'm Jane Tubby, I live at Port Lyon, I'm looking forward to joining in um, and helping with this wonderful cause. Are you good at this sort of thing? <laughs> um, I enjoy doing it, yes, I do enjoy sewing, yes, yes. As soon as um, Andrew has um, transferred the designs onto the canvas, each one will be put onto a frame. Um, we will have six hosts, hostesses, one for each frame, and he will go round in sequence to make sure that each team of stitchers has all the equipment, they know what they're doing, and they know what stitches to use. Um, at the moment, we've got two ready to roll, and he is currently doing the third. The bangs in the background are the staples as he's proceeding with the third panel. When I see it all done, it'll be quite an eye-opener, I think, from, because from, from the beginnings of seeing the children's drawings and then my 
my involvement in it, designing, and then to have all these wonderful people volunteering to actually make it. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to have so many people's input. Fran Evans, designer of the tapestry. In fact, you could say that our tapestry, the talking tapestry of Langham, it's called, drags history into the 21st century, the hint being in the name. When it's set up in the church, you'll be able to use a mobile phone or tablet to display the story of what you're seeing. More about how we're doing that in later episodes. Thanks as ever to our backers, including the Heritage Lottery Fund and CADU. That's it until next time. But do tell us what you think of this edition via the website www.heritagelangham.org.uk.